Hello, children. Welcome to my English class. I am Miss Eva, your English teacher for today. So, before we begin, try to think, how many different means of transport do you know of? Trucks, cars, the MLT, LRT, trains, ferries. So, let's get around the world with me today. In today's interesting lesson, I will show you how to list specific information and details of simple text using thieves, T-H-I-E-V-E-S, thieves. But before we continue, you will need to understand a few important things, especially the six important vocabularies. And if you do have your Get Smart Plus 4 textbook with you, you may turn to page 62. The first word for today is very common. The first word is motorbike. Yes, motorbike. I have attached some other examples for you to understand more about motorbikes. Can you guess what are motorbikes? Well, in addition, can you see the difference between the motorbikes in early 90s and the modern motorbikes that we have today? Like, are they the same? Do they have the same amount of wheels? The difference is in terms of designs. And yet, the similarity is all. All motorbikes have two wheels. Yes, just two wheels. And the second word for today is taxi. Yes, the commonly seen red and white vehicle. So in this photo, I have attached taxis from all around the world. The one in yellow is the taxi in the United States. And the one in black is the one in the United Kingdom. Then, this is interesting. It's pink in Mexico. And last but not least, the one from our country is the common red and white taxi. The third word for today is comfortable. Yes, comfort. It means cozy. You feel nice and pleasant to spend time in, like your bed. Just like all the pictures I have attached here, they are all very, very comfortable. By the way, do remember, please remind yourself to remember the spelling while watching the show. This is because we will be having an interesting spelling game later. Your next word, which is the fourth word, is exciting. Yes, exciting, just like roller coaster rides. An exciting roller coaster ride will make you go wow and it makes you scream because you make, it makes you feel really, really excited. And of course, on top of that, you're happy. But remember, we don't say that the ride is excited. Instead, it should be that the ride is so exciting. Excited is how you feel. Exciting and excited are actually two most common words that pupils tend to use wrongly and you don't want to make this mistake again. The fifth word for today is also very common and something that you would want to be. The fifth word is tourist. A tourist would often bring along their luggage or their backpack, a camera and even a map. Or sometimes, probably now, you would have Waze or Google Maps when they travel all around the world. So, I'm pretty sure you would know how to spot a tourist now, right? or you would probably know how to act like a tourist now. Well, I hope you do. The last word for today is slow. Yes, slow. It means not fast. For instance, the tortoise and snail crawl slowly. So, can you remember the spelling of all those six words? Were they difficult for you to spell? Were they new words to you? Or have you seen these words before? Well, let's go through all the words again before we start playing an exciting game. Remember, the first word is motorbike. Now, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to spell the word with me. Motorbike. M-O-T-O-R-B-I-K-E. Motorbike. The second word is taxi. Yes, the one that comes in yellow, pink, black and even red. Let's spell 
T A X I, taxi. The third word is comfortable. How do you spell it? It starts with C and it's quite long. C O M F O R T A B L E, comfortable. The fourth word is exciting. So let's spell E X C I T I N G, exciting. Good job, boys and girls. The four words were not so difficult, right? Now let's move on to the fifth word. Tourist. Again, close your eyes and try to spell T O U R I S T and T. Tourist. So here comes the last word, which is slow. Just like the tortoise, try to spell it slowly. It is a very simple word. You would not and you should not make a mistake. So let's spell. S L O W. Slow. Good job, boys and girls. So now moving on. Can you remember all the six words that you've learned? The one that involves comfortable, taxi, motorbike. Well, we are going to play another game, and this game is called What Are the Missing Letters? Yes, just like Hangman. So while you're watching at home, I would like you to guess what are the missing letters? How could you complete them? For this game, you might need a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper, or probably a notebook. And while watching this, you may jot down your answers. Remember, it's okay if you get it wrong. Then you may check your answers after completing all six questions. Are you ready, boys and girls? Yes, good job. So now we are going to watch this video together, and once we are done, we will try to attempt the next activity. I hope that all of you could find the missing letters. As a reminder, boys and girls, remember, in order to understand what you read, or even when you speak, you need to understand most of the words in the text. And if you don't, you may get the help from a dictionary or even Google. 
Having a strong vocabulary is actually the key component of any reading comprehension. It makes it easier for you to read. It doesn't matter if it's just a text message or even a book. Okay, if you do have a textbook, I would love it if you could turn to page 62. This would tell you more about it. Now, the bigger question for today, do you know any reading skills? How would you read? And how can you read? So today on this beautiful day, we are going to learn to read using Thieves. T-H-I-E-V-E-S. T stands for title. Yes, the title of what you're reading. H stands for heading. I stands for introduction. And E, which is also the first letter of my name, stands for the first sentence in each paragraph. V stands for visual or vocabulary. Sometimes in books, you may not find visuals, but all books would have great amount of vocabulary. So, you might need to imagine when you come across that particular word, especially when there are no visuals. That is when your imagination runs free. The next E is the end of a paragraph. It sounds a lot like a conclusion. But lastly, S stands for summary. You will need to summarize your thinking and therefore make conclusion. What was the text about? What did you get out of it? Was it a scary story? Was it fun? Were you sad? Were you happy? What was it all about? Okay, now let's analyze each and every paragraph using thieves. We look at the first paragraph. And I know it can get overwhelming, so I would want all of you to just take a deep breath and let go. Okay, T is the main title of today's topic, which is different mean of transport. That's quite easy, right? Because usually a title would be very upfront. Heading can be a picture too. So sometimes we may look for photo clues in the textbook. Next, let's move on to I. The big I is actually the introduction. Look at the paragraphs. The first paragraph is usually where the introduction is. In the first paragraph, we can see that the introduction is a tuk-tuk is like a motorbike with three wheels. That was a clear introduction. While the first supporting detail is the driver sits in the front and two to three people can sit in the back. Tuk-tuk is actually really famous in Thailand. We do not have it here in Malaysia. But if you do visit Thailand, you should try to ride a tuk-tuk. Here comes the visual part, where you can actually imagine what is a tuk-tuk like? Can you imagine if tuk-tuk can actually be faster than taxis? What if they're actually slower? And finally, the most important part is the summary. Look at the last sentence. It states, Riding in tuk-tuk is fun and exciting. This shows you that tuk-tuk is a fun and exciting mode of transportation. So, ask yourself, what transportation was this whole paragraph about? Among the pictures that were given to you, which one has wheels? Which one looked like a taxi? Was it pink? Was it black? Was it red? Was it white? Well, that's the answer for it. Let's practice. In this section, we are going to analyze the second and the third paragraph now. It is almost the same like what you did in the beginning, but this time you may put a bracket and state T, H, I, E, V, and S. Are you ready? Let's go. So, in this section, you are given approximately about one minute for each paragraph. And in this one minute, you would have to analyze the paragraph from the beginning up to the end. And I hope all of you are ready now. Let's check the answers. Remember, it's okay to make a mistake because that's how you learn. Well, the introduction to this paragraph is different. It says, gondolas are long boats. In this case, long boat will tell you which picture belongs to this paragraph. I think it's quite clear cut here as there is only one boat there. And I hope you also got it correct. And just so you know, gondola is very famous in Venice. Gondolas are used in Italy. And imagine that they use them to get from one place to another, just like how you use a car in Malaysia to get from one place to another, or a train, or a taxi. 
finally, the paragraph ends with tourists love gondolas. It is a mode of transportation that is loved by people and tourists especially. I really wish that this paragraph actually gave you a good insight and an overview as well as an imagination on what it's like to travel in Italy. Now, here comes the last paragraph. Do what you did before and yes, remember the keyword. What was the keyword? And what is the keyword in this paragraph? Yes, you are right. It is snow. Among the three pictures given, only one has the snow scene. So that was quite obvious, wasn't it? So I wish all of you got the right answers. From this section, you have learned about the tuk-tuk, the gondola, as well as the snowmobiles. Well, do snowmobiles have wheel? No, they have got no wheels. Now think, in a snow scene, what do they have to wear? Would they wear what I'm wearing now? Would they wear what you are wearing? Could they just wear the track pants? Yes, of course they would wear warm clothes, not like the ones we are wearing now, as everyone or anyone can get very cold on a snow wheel due to the temperature. So, have you actually matched the paragraphs to the right pictures? It wasn't that difficult, wasn't it? If you are not ready, it's okay. You may read the text again and again. Sometimes in reading, you might have to take in a little bit slower and read slower to be able to understand the text better. Remember, practice makes perfect. And it's only with mistakes that you learn. So it's okay if you do not understand, reread your text. So, boys and girls, here are the answers. Did you get it right? And if you did, which sentence tells you the answer? Yes, the introduction part clearly tells you which picture it is. It was very, very direct. Let me read the sentence once again. A tuk-tuk is like a motorbike with three wheels. A tuk-tuk is like a motorbike with three wheels. So we have learned earlier that motorbike in general has about two wheels, but a tuk-tuk has three, and that is how they are different. Since the picture in the textbook is very, very small, let me show you how a tuk-tuk really looks like. Do you know that tuk-tuk is known for their revving motors, colorful paint jobs, and of course, most importantly, entertaining rides. Something that tourists would always seek for. Tuk-tuks are indeed an iconic symbol of Thailand, which is not far away from us, especially in Bangkok City, where the nightlife is super busy and fun. So, let's continue with the next paragraph. Which sentence tells you the answer? Was it obvious? Yes, you are right. The introduction part again, it stated the answer very clearly. Gondolas are long boats. Remember, gondolas are long boats. Only one boat picture among the three, right? So that was pretty obvious. I hope you got it right. And now, let's look at another photo of gondolas. Like I mentioned earlier, gondolas are famous in Venice and Italy. For your information, the streets of Venice are waterways. It's made out of water, it's on water, and that is why making boats the official transportation is the best choice. It is actually an ancient rowboat, and it has evolved over the last 1,000 years before you were born, before I was born, and even before our parents were born. It took 1,000 years for it to become slick, graceful, and as amazing as it is today. So now comes the last paragraph. What was the keyword, boys and girls? Yes, snow. Something that we don't have here in Malaysia. Again, the eye in thieves has given us the answers again. People actually ride snowmobiles on snow. Yes, instead of riding their cars, they ride snowmobiles on snow. So you see, snowmobiles haven't got wheels and drivers must wear a helmet and warm clothes. You would not survive in normal clothing like this. 
Since it moves very fast, one can get very, very cold on a snowmobile. So the best bet is to wear the right attire and a helmet. So now, boys and girls, can we take a snowmobile in Malaysia? Why don't you think for about 10 seconds? Could you ride a snowmobile in Malaysia? Of course not, as there is no snow in Malaysia. Besides probably the one you see in ICT, a snowmobile also known as a motosled or motosledge ski mobile is not something that you can ride in Malaysia. And you would have to go to countries that have snow to be able to enjoy such transportation. Ski do or snow machine is a motorized vehicle designed for winter. And as you know it, we do not have winter in Malaysia. So during winter, people would travel and go on recreational trips on snowmobiles. All right, now comes a part where you would check your answers. How many of you actually got all of it right? Or why don't you ask yourself, how many did you get right? I hope you understood all three paragraphs really well now. It wasn't that difficult. We had tuk-tuk. What else did we have? We had snowmobile and we also had gondola. If you understand, it will be as easy as A, B, C for the next task. So let's go through the text and take the correct answers. But before we begin, still remember the six important vocabularies and words that we, we learned in the beginning of the lesson. Do put your imagination and let your imagination roam free when you come across the words, especially in the upcoming text. Now, boys and girls, Look at the first paragraph about tuk-tuk. Which statement best describes the tuk-tuk? Which tells you that it describes the tuk-tuk the best? Look at the very first statement. In the first statement, it says, It has got wheels. Yes, you are right. Please think. And secondly, It's a kind of a boat. Is this true or false? This is definitely a false statement, so we cannot take. Thirdly, he hasn't gotten wheels. Is this true or false? No, it does have wheels. Remember, tuk-tuks have three wheels in total. And fourth, it is slow. Do you think it is slow? No, in fact, Tuk-tuks are faster than taxis. And the fifth one, drivers have to wear warm clothes. Do you think the statement is true or is it false? Well, the statement is a false statement again. You don't have to wear warm clothes when you are riding in a tuk-tuk. And the sixth statement, tourists take it. Yes, this is the correct statement. So what you would have to do now is, you would need to put a tick next to the statement. I hope you could get all the answers correctly. And remember, it's okay to make mistakes because it is a process of learning. Now, let us look at the second paragraph once again. The second paragraph is about gondolas. Which statement best describe the transportation gondola? something that we don't actually have here in Malaysia. Firstly, it has got wheels. So boys and girls, is this correct or is it wrong? Is it true or is it false? No, it hasn't got any wheels, so the statement is false. Secondly, it's a kind of boat. Are gondolas boats? Yes, this is a right statement. So what you can do is tick. Let's look at the third statement. It hasn't got wheels. Is this true or is it false? Yes, a correct statement too. It is true, so let's stick. It is slow. Is this a true or is it a false statement? It is indeed a true and correct statement. So once again, please put a tick next to the statement. Next. Drivers have to wear warm clothes. Do you need warm clothes to be in a gondola? 
This is a false statement. Do not tick as you do not need to wear warm clothes in order for you to wear gondola. You can wear whatever you're wearing now or whatever I'm wearing right now. The next statement. Tourists take it. Yes, this is a correct statement. It is true. So what you're going to do once again is you are going to tick next to the statement. Now let's check. Did you get all the answers correct? Or were there some that you got wrong? It's alright. Let's practice one more. For this one, we are going to look at the third paragraph. And the third paragraph is about snowmobiles. Which statements below actually describe the snowmobile the best? Are these statements true or is it false? Firstly, it has got wheels. So try to think, do snowmobiles have wheels? No, it has got no wheels, but they have got skis. So the statement is false. Secondly, it is a kind of boat. Are snowmobiles boats? No, so please do not tick. Thirdly, it hasn't got wheels. Do snowmobiles have wheels? Yes, they do. So tick right as it is a correct statement. And the fourth one, it is slow. This is a false statement as it is fast. And for the fifth statement, drivers have to wear warm clothes. Yes, true, because you write this during winter. Tourists take it. Well, the answer is no, not really. And this is because snowmobiles can be very, very expensive to ride on. I hope all of you scored really well. And again, remember, it's all right to make mistakes here and there. So good job. This time, what I would want you to do is, I would like you to use the internet to find other means of transportation. Read, and what you can do is jot down the points using thieves. T-H-I-E-V-E-S. It will allow you to actually understand the text even better. And even when you don't, what you would do and what you can do is actually reread the text. So, uh, boys and girls, at the end of the day, I just hope that you enjoyed today's lesson. And what I would want you to do is to go back home and try to read and practice reading using Thieves. T-H-I-E-V-E-S. And that is all for today. I hope you guys had an amazing time during this lesson and have learned a lot. Bye!